Captain's log, Stargate 57931.4. Crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented iron storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the rescue. Dara Ryder. problem I uh, I'm not great with flying but these little shuttles are the worst stick around in Starfleet and you'll be sure to see worse than this I have and you're here to talk about it in the flesh that's good Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Dara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs. Starbase on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torbalan test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Guntaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. Really? That's quite impressive. Thank you. It was tough. But, you know, I set my mind to it and it paid off. Place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydak. Wait, you're Jara Rydak? You absolutely.
absolutely crushed at Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... <laughs> it, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. Well, now you know. Keep your eyes and ears open and you might pick up on things. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermod is a bull ring. So I'm Are looking you for right? someone with good yeah, experience. Yeah, I'm just... Well, I'm not sure where my departure drop is. The Resolute's gonna leave without me. Look here. The Resolute is leaving from this dock. Oh, you're right. Nerves must be getting to me. Thanks so much, Commander. Starbase 128 has four docks. Excuse me, have you seen a bull ring around here? Yes, sir. Right back there, near the replicator. Ah, there he is. Thank you. Happy to help, Commander. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Ryder. I'm Commander Jan Irma, operations officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. It was a bit bumpy, but otherwise okay. My apologies. This storm is unlike anything I've seen before. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer in vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship, though. To our way of thinking, trust me. I'll do my best to live up to expectations. Well, I'm sure you'll do just fine. And if I can help in any way, just let me know. SS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half venting plasma fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunctioned. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limit. Stabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble was warped. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but it was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. That's what it means to be a crew. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. It's been six months. What's the attitude among the crew now? Unsettled. But I hope that a new mission will help them move forward. If not, move on. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solano for quite some time. And I'm glad you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake. 
that he should have promoted from within. But you might want to tread lightly first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Trust is earned. And it sounds like I have my work cut out for me. But I plan on winning them over. I don't doubt that. I just figured it was better to know what you were walking in. Of course. Starfleet has assigned us a high priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. Just a thing. Thing was totally fine. Nice work, Carter. <laughs> Nothing to it, Millie. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. Everything okay? I dropped a non ferrous connector between coils. Move a few of them to find it, and then... Ooh, another hour recalibrating. Ouch. I'll leave you to it. Diaz, you're in my light. Oh, sorry. Come on! Hey, Diaz, have you seen a hyperspanner around here? I last saw it near the shuttle, uh, Ptarmigan. I'll let you know. Diaz. That's not where that goes. You need to figure out where you're supposed to be. The storm looks pretty bad. It's another reason why we need to get this ship ready. Oh, hey, there he is. You're a lifesaver, Diaz. I don't know about that, but I try. The explosion in there was pretty extreme. <laughs> Nothing I couldn't handle, though. Place for everything, and everything in its place. So clean I can see myself. And you know what? Not half bad.
you give us some help with the transporter? What's the problem? We need to test this cargo transporter. I've never been that great with the signal plotting. I got it. No problem. Chilvac, not a word. Someone gonna fix that? Then take the turbo lift from section two to section three. Oh, wait, there's some unique for crossover around Junction 32E. <laughs> Which do you have against using the turbo lift? Engineer. I heard the new Echo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for is something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. You and me working together? We can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. Looks like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovok. We were just looking for you, Commander. Catchy officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. 
point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Etzelar on repeated occasions. But Commander Chova, isn't it true that if we were almost late, it categorically means that we were not late? That is correct, Mr. Diaz. I mean, if anything, Etzelar and I are following the schedule to the letter. Yes, perhaps I should adjust the schedule accordingly. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. Whatever it throws at us, we'll be ready. We've got the best chief engineer in the fleet. I am a Vulcan, Mr. Diaz. Flattery is not necessary. All that I require is that you do your job. Right now, that entails critical preparation, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander that. Chova. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chovak said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the Wraths know it. So they're throwing every willing body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. It all comes down to us, Nick. We're the ones who will get it ready. I know what we can do. But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, oh. <sighs> Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's gotta be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda, you weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm gonna take the high road here, pretend we didn't say that, and welcome you aboard. He's a better diplomat than I am. He still owes me a bottle of Sorium Brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in your security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. See you on the other side. Activating magnetic soul.
Agent Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Cobrion. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Viridian to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Duridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the rest here. be out there soon going where no one has gone before the first mineral captain solano ever discovered always was the nostalgic type Wait to plot a course myself. Just a sip of something. Rack the Juno. That sure has a kick. Time I saw you, it was graduation from the academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. My only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. With the arrival of the first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. That would be totally unnecessary. I don't need any pomp and circumstance. We've been here all of five minutes, and already you're trying to make us more efficient. I like it. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. I assume you mean the accident. That's right. The tragic accident, I mean, really. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradimes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained greater speed longer, faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there, within our grasp. pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship could handle. It was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees, as much as we tell ourselves otherwise. It's true, but as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I fail. In my defense, I will say I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my junior staff had been willing and trusting. There was a lot of pushback from their former XOs, and I don't think that cost me a ton. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. 
Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Well, good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. No positive talk. Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly as never we've seen before. And we'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details at the rendezvous. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. Starfleet hasn't said. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive. I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying. You have my full support. It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydak, my new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility is more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian. He's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time. And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobayash, because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves, and you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done, but you definitely set a standard to strive for. You really do know a thing or two about me. I'm glad I could inspire you, but it's important to chart your own path. Thanks. You can count on it. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Irma. 
Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. Have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag your feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. is a science vessel, primarily. It might explain Randy Westbrook's attitude. I'll have to speak with him later. So my base, full of people and now my responsibility. Back to the station. Hopefully, diplomatic mission won't require we use our weapons much, but if it comes to that, we'll be ready. Communications. Keeps us in contact internally and with other vessels. Operations. Staffing, supplies. There's a lot to keep track of on a starship. Good thing we have Commander Ermont. Turbo lift could take me anywhere on the ship, but I'm right where I need to be. Impressive range of view. First officer suit. My suit. Right now, though, I need to fit into Captain Selenium. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition crew. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the sit. Great. Let's get to that emitter.
looks good. That wasn't so hard. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. You seem to think very highly of yourself. With good reason. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario, but not outside the realm of possibility. Captain Solano's familiar with my condition. I'm sure it factored into his decision, so I'd have to say it's not a problem. But we should probably have a contingency plan just in case. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable, and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew, and he was one of my closest friends. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland, and it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm. ...we're flying into. It's... ...unusual. Unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if a Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its pattern, its nature, we can come up with a scientific counter. Just a moment. We've got a massive energy wave inbound, on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking plants are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Red alert. Aye. <coughs> Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector gate. Send the aux power to the shield. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shield. Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. The more timing displayed, it's going to be tight. Good. Send the pulse on my command. Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. The more timing displayed, it's going to be tight. Good. Send the pulse on my command. Now. We got it. This is it. All hands, brace for impact.
supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Well, at every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port in the cell's plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one fail-safe circuit? Override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other.
Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. So we gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but you know. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. So we gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up.
opening the access point. Now halting the ETS flow to the port nacelles, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Manifold adjusters will set to neutral. Warp, warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzle, it's still running. are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Let's cut him through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. We need to disengage from Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. the polarity of the hull. Theoretically, we'll repel the docking clamps and repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. Captain Solano, put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamps. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Shara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? Better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is no protocol. And the other lines. What is the holdup? Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander.
primary system failure. I got it. Roger that. 